you've probably heard of the law of attraction. So it's the way that a lot of people try to achieve their goals and their manifest their dreams uh, and visions. Well, I, for a long time, I have been a critic of the law of attraction. And today I want to offer you an alternative. I, I'm going to call it the law of attainment. Uh, and I, when I came up with this, I didn't realize, I just Googled it like two minutes before this video and realized, oh, well, there's a book called The Law of Attainment written in 1961, but I've never read the book. I don't know what it says, but I'm just using play on words here. Instead of Law of Attraction, Law of Attainment, I'm going to give you the four A's of the Law of Attainment so that you can finally attain to your goals and visions, etc. And here's the process that I recommend. So just similar to the law of attraction we start with aspiration having a clear goal but the difference here is that in the law of attraction uh, you essentially fixate on your goal uh, you want a specific number and and i just want to say by the way i think the law of attraction works when it comes to attracting a good relationship or a bad one um, <laughs> But I don't think the law of attraction, mark my words, quote me here, I don't believe the law of attraction works for financial success. I know that's shocking because most of the law of attraction, much of it out there is about financial success. I don't believe it works because, well, I, I've tried it myself. Uh, I don't credit law of attraction for my success. I've tried a little bit in the beginning, didn't work. I don't know, maybe I integrated it, maybe it does work. I don't, I don't think so though, because I've seen lots of people try the law of attraction, maybe you have as well. Didn't bring financial success. And I think a couple of reasons why is that it typically uh, makes you have fant fantasy, magical thinking about, about what financial success, how it can be achieved and what, what you can achieve and what time frame. So it's magical thinking, it's wishful thinking. It's not grounded in reality. And it's also um, tends, it, it, law of attraction teachings tend to, they don't talk enough about action. They talk a lot about visualization, emotions, and you know, all, that, all, that, all that stuff that you can do sitting down, okay? Or at most standing up and doing power poses or whatever, which power poses do, do, do work, I believe that. But you can't just imagine, visualize, feel, and you know, change your language, blah, blah, blah. But, you're not taking strategic action. The law of attraction ain't gonna work. So much of the law of attraction teachings, I think, are just selling people. They make lots and lots of money because it feels good. It feels good to imagine being rich. It feels good to come across a modality that just tells you you don't have to do anything scary. You just have to sit there and imagine feeling rich and imagine what wealth you could have and do power poses maybe. Power poses is at least a little bit of action there. Um, but so they, they make lots of money taking money from you because they give you methods that feel good to you. But in order to actually attain something you don't have, it requires you to go outside of your comfort zone. That's why the law of, if you don't get out of your comfort zone, if you just feel good, feel good, imagine things and don't get outside your comfort zone. Um, it's the universe partners with your physical body to achieve physical results. Spirit, right, uses your third dimensional physical being to, if you want third dimensional physical results, right? So I, I just to complete my, my rambling here about the law of attraction, I think it does work for relationships. I feel like that's how I manifested my, 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 my spouse, my wife. And, um, but I, I think that the law of attraction for relationships works in terms of the inner characteristics. I think if we picture a particular type of person on the outside and you know, how tall or short they are or whatever, what, what they look like, I think you're, you're limiting yourself dramatically. But the law of attraction does work for inner stuff, for vibrational stuff, okay? So for like, oh, I want this kind of energy, um, this, this kind of energy and this kind of person. It really, I think it really does work. But when it comes to financial business success, after 10, 15 years of looking at people trying it, I don't think it works. And let me give you the law of attainment then. So the first step of law of attainment is aspiration. So we do start with a clear goal. It's okay to have a clear number. I want to enroll, you know, uh, 
35 students in my next online course, let's say, whatever, whatever it is you're trying to do. But here's the key. You've got to be careful about the number being, being wishful thinking, unrealistic, ungrounded. Where are you getting the number? If you're saying, I want to make, I can amass, feel so good to imagine myself making a million dollars a year, okay? Where are you getting this? Where are you getting this? Million dollars a year or six figures or whatever? Where did someone give you that number and say that that equals success? And then you believe them? Do you, do you even really know what it means to have a million dollars? Do you really even know what it means and how you get there? It's it's magical. Stop the magical thinking, everybody. Please, okay. It's it's ridiculous, and it's keeping you stuck for decades, if not you know years, at least months or years or decades. Some some for some people. So, stop the magical thinking. Make it a a clear goal that is realistic, but yet a stretch. So if you're if you're making ten thousand dollars a year right now. And you tell me, George, I'm, I'm visualizing $100,000 a year. I'm like, do you even, have you ever made $100,000 a year in your life? No, I've made 10,000, 30,000, 50, 70,000, never $100,000 a year doing this business. You're, 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 just, you're just totally ungrounded and you're just floating in the clouds and it never becomes reality. So um, if you make $10,000 a year right now, then say, in you know this year, last year you made ten thousand. Then this year you're going to make fifteen thousand. Well, George, you can't pay the bills of fifteen thousand. Go get a job. I've said this in many of my videos. You you can't you can't look down on people who have jobs. You know, jobs are to to me having a job is harder than being in business because I I can't work for other people. I just can't anymore. Um, so being in a job means I have to constrain myself and really become much more obedient, <laughs> less of a rebel and less take less initiative and all that stuff. Uh, so that's really hard for me. But if I had to, I would go get a job. I would be humble. Humility is a good thing to practice, something the law of attraction doesn't teach also. Humility is a great, wonderful trait. If you have to go get a job, go get a job. There's, it only will benefit you financially. It will benefit you spiritually. You'll learn to be humble. You'll learn to be obedient. It's a good thing. And then you'll also have more motivation to work on your business at night or on the weekends. You'll have more motivation because you want to get out of the job, right, eventually. So make sure you're financially stable first, period. Financial stability has to come first before you build an authentic business. Otherwise, it's, it can never be an authentic business. Not never, but it, you'll, you'll always want to manipulate other people or you always have to manipulate other people to make your business work, whereas authentic business means you can be your higher self your most authentic self um, in your business and build a build a real business that way. So, um, okay, you made ten thousand in your business last year. This year, you'll make fifteen thousand. That's a stretch, but it's realistic. You know you can do it, okay? Because you made ten thousand. Now this year, you can make fifteen thousand. Okay, pick the numbers you want. Maybe you made fifty thousand last year in your business. This year, you can make sixty or seventy thousand, maybe seventy-five thousand. It's a realistic stretch goal. Get clear on that number. Okay, and once you get clear on that number and you realize it's 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 realistic. Now, if you say, "Well, George, I don't know what's realistic because I've never it's first time in business or I've never I've made money but not as at, at being self-employed in my own business," then you need to talk to a, a an expert, a proven expert that can be realistic with you, and not sell you dreams because they want to take your money. Because so many people like me want to take your money to sell you dreams and re unrealistic steps. Uh, and hopefully I'm going to give you realistic realism, uh, realism that's grounded in spirituality, you know, so <laughs> realism plus spirituality. Um, so uh, number one, aspiration, clear goal. That's a realistic stretch. And um, and here's the key. Once you have a clear goal, that's a realistic stretch. I invite you. I encourage you to hold loosely to that goal, because the second part of the aspiration is now that I have a clear, realistic goal, what are, can I get also clear on the process it'll take to get to that goal? What is the action steps? What is this, what are the strategic, what's the strategic journey from where you are now to that realistic stretch goal? Write down the action steps. 
And if you don't know how to get there, you need to do some research or work with a, a, a proven expert that knows how to get from where you are to where you want to go and, and have the realistic steps to do it. Okay. So that's the first step of law of attainment is aspiration, clear, realistic stretch goal. Once you get clear on it, hold loosely to it, but get super dedicated to the strategic process of actions that will take you from where you are to your realistic stretch goal. Okay. So that's aspiration. Okay, now um, the second step from aspiration is alignment. Now, again, this is also borrowing a bit from the law of attraction because there are some parts of there that are good. That's why it's so popular. And alignment means here not sitting on your couch, visualizing the red Porsche, visualizing the million dollar, you know, billion dollar income or million dollar house or whatever it is. No, alignment means to, means to get clear how you want to work as you take the, the strategic journey from where you are to what your realistic stretch goal is. That journey doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to be filled with anxiety and frustration and fear, which is how so many people build their business, right? Hustle. Hustle is founded on anxiety, grasping, um, uh, you know, over ambition, right? And and uh, trying to prove, you know, trying to prove a puffed up self image to, you know, friends and family to prove that you're, you know, you're worth something. No, you don't have to do that. Alignment means I want to, from where I am to my realistic stretch goal, I want to work with a calm joy. I, I want to work with a playful experimentation. I want to work with bringing love to this moment. That's how I want to work. Because the bigger truth beyond your realistic stretch goal, the bigger goal is to live a life well lived. The bigger goal is if I should die today, I have spent this day well. It doesn't matter if I got to my realistic goal or not. Did I spend this day in spirit? Did I spend this day embodying spirit? That's much more important than your realistic than your goals or your your work or your business, right? So, how would you work as you go from here all the way to there? Every moment is is your life. You, you don't you don't work and then live life. Your work is your life. This is your life. You, you spend the majority of the best energy of your waking hours working. So that is your life. So align how you want to work with how you actually work. So before you do any hour of work on your business, before you do any hour of work on your business, spend a minute aligning your emotional and spiritual posture, maybe physical posture too, with how you want to work during this hour. Whatever thing it is you're doing, you might be doing something so-called scary, reaching out to a potential client, oh, writing something, you don't know what you're gonna say, you don't know what you're gonna write. Most of the things that we're gonna do in our business is scary. I'm sorry to say, if no, one's ever, no one has told you, yes, you're going to have to take scare, do scary things every single day in your business. It's gonna be scary. You're not gonna know how it's gonna turn out. You're not gonna have any guarantee of results. You're not gonna, as you write, you don't know if the piece is gonna be you know, bad or good. You don't know. It's all scary, but if you align with how you want to work, then you reframe the scariness, the fear, you reframe it as excitement, as curiosity, as adventure, right? So alignment is the second step in the law of attainment is every single hour of your work uh, towards your realistic stretch goal, you are aligning your spirit and emotional posture to how you want to, to, to live. So alignment, the second step. The third step is action. Action is the third step of a law of attainment. Well, I was doing some quick research on the, the steps to a law of attraction. And those of you who are law of attraction experts, how would you list the steps to law of attraction? Because when I did some research, just the first Google results for steps to law of attraction, I read the articles. I'm like, where is action? I mean, there's like eight steps to law of attraction. And like step seven is maybe a little bit of action. But it's like, how can you attract something into your life or your work without 
being like half of it being about action, you know, like, like I just don't understand. I genuinely do not understand how people can, can put up with a law of attraction teachings. Cause it's like, where is action? It's like, okay. So anyway, <laughs> step off of my, uh, my, 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 uh, my ranting here and action is the third step of law of attainment. And well, you've heard me talk about this a lot. Consistent action. Okay. Produces excellence eventually which produces results so you you know that action means going into the cave meaning meaning you know kind of going on the hero's journey you're going to a cave of the unknown your business is not no people will try to sell you a guaranteed five-step process for six figures they're lying to you let me just Put it out there, whatever, five steps, three steps, 12 steps, 28 steps, guaranteed to six-figure income or seven-figure or successful business. Lies, lies, lies. A successful business is about going into the cave of the unknown with, with courage or fear. However people go in, they go in and then they learn about themselves. They discover what the market wants. They, they align the two, what they learn about themselves and what the market wants. And eventually, more and more, they create something that the market wants and that they themselves are proud to, to offer and, and, and operationalize it in a way that's profitable. That's what a successful business is. I have never, <laughs> it's not about guaranteed steps, simple, easy, ridiculous, lies. What is true is, all, all that that's true is action. You, you take action to go into the dark cave. Now, if you have friends to go with you, that's wonderful. If you have a coach that you can afford, great. If you have a, a, a Facebook group that is supportive of you and you can go in you know, together, great, wonderful. You don't have to go in by yourself, but you do have to go in, right? And it's still going to be dark and it's going to be unknown and you have to make your own light, right? You have to generate, generate within yourself your own light. Some others can help provide a little bit of light, but ultimately you have to go into parts of the cave. Some parts of the cave, you have to go by yourself. No coach can say, well, let me do this for you. No consultant can, can do it for you the way that's authentic to you. You will have to go into parts of the cave by yourself. So action, consistent action. You don't have to, you don't have to run into the dark cave because that's you'll probably trip and like hurt yourself. You can take small steps into the dark cave. Oh, let me try it a little bit. Ooh. Okay, it's, it's kind of scary, but reframe it as adventure. You know? So action, consistent action produces excellence eventually, which produces results. It's that order. You can't expect market results without excellence of understanding yourself and your market and producing something excellent that the market wants, right? And then operationalizing that to become profitable. So action is the third, the third part of the law of attainment. And finally, the fourth part of the law of attainment Adjustment, adjustment. Again, I don't see this in the law of attraction teachings. Please point me where adjustment is in the law of attraction teachings. I don't see it because the law of attraction, it, it kind of this idea of um, you visualize one thing and maybe again, I'm not an expert on it. So maybe I'm totally bastardizing it, but you visualize one thing and you just keep visualizing it, you know, until it becomes reality, right? There is no adjustment. There, there is only your egoic your human, egoic, limit, extremely limited slice of what the future should be. When God wants to give you so much more, when the universe is, is way bigger, your vision of what your future can be is one grain of, of, of sand on one beach of the entire world. And the universe, God, source, wants to give you the entire world to say, no, open up open up, adjust, adjust as frequently as you can, because you are learning about me, God says, the universe says, your highest self says, you're learning about me as you go into the cave. You're learning about what you really want. And you're learning about what the world really needs from you, adjustment. So you're going to have to keep adjusting your aspirations, okay, and then your alignment to say, okay, no, actually, I want, I want to work in this way. I want to work with, I want to work with courage okay today i want to work with courage okay and then, and then the next day you know today i want to work with grace 
I want to work with grace. I'm going to practice that. So adjusting all along the way, your aspirations, your alignment, your action, all along the way you're adjusting, you know, and you attain as a result. You attain, guess what? Yes, you will attain your realistic stretch goals, of course, but you also attain your best possible self. And that's really what this is about. You, you thought you were going into the cave to find the treasure. You were going into the cave to find your best self. So I hope this is interesting. Um, four A's for you. I guess the fifth one is the, the law of attainment. I and mean, that's the first A. Aspiration, alignment, action, adjustment. And just keep following these four. And I think the beautiful thing about these four steps, it's, it's holographic, meaning you can look at these four steps in the context of a five-year plan or a one-month plan or this very hour. I aspire to accomplish this task this hour. I will align the way I work I will take action right now and I will adjust my actions along the way as I realize, oh, maybe that's not the smartest way of doing this. It's holographic, these four steps, aspiration, alignment, action, and adjustment. So I hope you enjoy trying this out, using it, take whatever piece of this or borrow the whole thing uh, and let me know how you get along with it. So, all right, thanks for those who are joining me live here, um, Lisa and Jace. Ida, Justine, Jen, Yule, Rachelle, uh, Linda, thank you all for joining me. And I look forward to any questions you have or any comments you want to share or from your own experience. How does this uh, make sense or how might you adjust it? Right? Adjustment is, is an important part of, of everything I think about as I, as, I, as I work and as I teach. So, all right, blessings to you and I wish you a successful attainment to the best that life has for you. Blessings.